also do have glaucoma. And as you know, it's inflammatory disease in the eyes. Each time I went to the eye doctor, my eye pressure was increasing. So that was becoming very worrisome as well. So between my joints really hurting and my worry about my eyesight, it was really time to get serious about paying attention and doing the things that I could do to try to make a change. I do not want to be on a bunch of medications, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now. If you can work ahead of the game, that's incentive to keep yourself off medications and keep yourself healthy. This channel is about patients sharing their stories and healing. Oftentimes people are frustrated with not finding the right answers when it comes to their health. So I created this channel so that I can share patient stories with you. And maybe it'll resonate with someone. Maybe you'll learn the path that they took to healing. And this might help you in your own journeys. Welcome. We're here with Melissa and Larry. They are joining us today to talk about their health story and how they were able to transform their lives by being empowered to make some really, really hard choices in their lifestyle. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. Hi, Dr. Patel. Hi. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you too, Melissa. Let's start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about what your life was like before you decided to make changes? What was going on in your life? So probably the uh, main thing to know is that I was running a very successful business and um, had been in corporate America for 30 plus years, going, going, going. And then I retired in January of 2020. And uh, we moved to Arizona and it was time for me to focus less on Wall Street and more on my own street. And uh, that's when I first met up with you. And so what were some of your you know, life-changing things that were happening at that time. I know a lot of people may rel relate to you and retiring and then finding themselves in a new life. Let's talk a little bit about what that felt like. Sure. Uh, one of the uh, things that actually occurred is right when I retired, that is right when COVID hit. So it really forced me, the whole world stopped turning. And so it forced my world to stop turning. And that was actually quite helpful. But what I was also noticing was that I was experiencing quite a bit of discomfort in some of my joints. Mm -hmm. uh, and while certainly I never had any sort of weight problem, in reflection, my workouts were really very limited. There really wasn't much effort. It was, you know, I would walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes while Larry made dinner. Uh, and uh, I also do have glaucoma. And as you know, it's inflammatory disease in the eyes. I inherited that from my mom. And we were seeing that um, each time I went to the eye doctor, my eye pressure was increasing. So that was becoming very worrisome as well. So between my joints really hurting and my worry about my eyesight, it was really time to get serious about paying attention uh, and doing the things that I could do to try to make a change. Mm. So you wanted to make a change from where you were to somewhere new. Tell me a little bit about the kinds of changes you had to make. Most of the changes were dietary related. I thought I was eating all of the right things. I thought I had so much discipline. You would never see me sit down and eat three chocolate chip cookies. But it turned out I virtually my entire diet was everything that was inflaming my inflammation. So from the Midwest, I lived on cheese, I lived on nuts, and many nuts can be good for you. But mm -hmm. I was making the choices with all of the nuts that were bad for me. Uh, things like rice, we would literally have every single night and white rice is just an inflammatory food. So you really helped me be very serious about the impact or the correlation between diet and overall health. And it was something that I, you know, I came in from one of our interactions together with my little green folder and said, okay, this is what I'm going to follow. And uh, within a very short period of time, my joints started to feel better. I did drop some weight. That wasn't the goal. So now we're mm -hmm. trying to put some of that weight back on, but maybe most important, my eye pressure has dramatically decreased. Um, I do have advanced glaucoma, so I'm always going to have to be on some sort of medication, but I'm not relying on that medication. And it's really a combination of diet, exercise, and uh, great eye health. I think that's improving that as well. 
Yeah, it's so important to mention that we want to use a comprehensive approach to health. So it's important to see your doctors. It's important to get your tests done. It's important to take your medications. But in addition to that, take on this empowerment to start making some changes to decrease inflammation in your body through food and nutrition and movement and stress and all the other things that um, that people sometimes forget is part of health. Now, Melissa, the other piece that you mentioned earlier was nutrition was an important piece, but exercise needed to change as well. So give me a snapshot of what your exercise routine looks like now. So now we actually will work out five or six days a week and it's far more aggressive. So uh, we actually uh, are blessed to have uh, enough equipment in our house here that we can be pretty rigorous. So between rowers, assault bike, weights, um, dumbbells, a lot of it uh, I don't love. I am not someone who just cannot wait to get up in the morning and work out every single day. Uh, but I do feel guilty if I don't do it because I know that it has really, really helped me. And I don't want to be that 65-year-old that has five or six medications. I'm very proud of the fact that other than my eye drops, I'm on no other medication. And that's a, that's a little bit of a badge of honor for me. Mm -hmm. That's so good. So you've made some significant changes in your life. What's the next step in your health journey? You know, the next step, Dr. Patel, is for me to be as serious about my uh, mindfulness as much as I have been on my diet and exercise. Larry's really eclipsed me in, in that regard. And, uh, you know, I see him faithfully uh, meditating every day when I run out to get my coffee. Uh, so that really is the, the next part of my journey um, so that we can really claim that we've had a holistic approach. Mm. And if you were talking to people out there that may suffer from some of the same conditions you've mentioned, glaucoma or osteoporosis or stress, right. what would you tell them to give them hope that there is, there is hope? I would tell them to be serious about putting forth the effort. And if you can be serious about putting forth the effort, the dividends that uh, you'll receive in the end are really surprising. I feel terrific. I have boundless energy. I've learned to cook a lot of new things. I dirty every dish in the house every night, uh, but I've really enjoyed it. And I feel like I've opened up a whole new world uh, for myself for, for many years to come. I'm, I'm going to be 65 in November and I, I have as much energy today as I would have 20 years ago. And you look beautiful and vibrant. So <laughs> it's definitely working for you. And so your partner in crime here, uh, Larry, <laughs> obviously has a role to play in making you more mindful and washing dishes after you. So let's talk to him a little bit about his journey. Larry, tell me a little bit about when Melissa retired and you had to move to Arizona, what are some of the things or concerns or shifts that you noticed in your own health? Well, I'm a you know creature of, of habits. I'm, you know, do this, like to do the same stuff every day. I don't like to deviate. So you know, this, this move was big for us in that um, it was exciting, yet it also brought many new things. So to me, that was challenging. And so it got me out of my, my uh, routine, you might say, whether that was diet or working out. And so uh, after Melissa had come to see you and, um, and I saw some of the things that you were doing as far as, um, you know, tests, blood draws, labs, finding out foods that were affecting her inflammation. Um, I thought this, I like this. This is something that I, because I've always been about my health, but if you can actually be a little more proactive on it and maybe find the things that are good for you, find the things that aren't so, so good for you as far as diet goes, um, whether that's through a uh, testing the, the, the body composition or doing like blood draws, which might help you find deficiencies in certain uh, uh, vitamins, minerals, or other things that are going on in your body. I think I, I really like that. And that's how I got started. So I was actually pretty healthy, but um, I knew I needed to work on some things. And, and I knew uh, because I was so, uh, just a, a habit of doing the same things every day. I knew knew I needed to work on my mind as well, and and I just like the way that the way 
when we meet with you, you don't just take one approach. And, and, and I'm, I believe the same thing. I do not want to be on a bunch of medications, uh, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now. If you can work ahead of the game, that's incentive to keep yourself off medications and keep yourself healthy you know, on a more of a, a natural, holistic approach. That's wonderful. So when we came together and we worked on things, Larry, what types of health issues did you start to identify from some of those diagnostics that you wanted to work on? Well, I, I knew that, uh, number one, I was retaining some, some body fat, not as well as not retaining. I mean, it was, it was there and probably adding on. Um, but not only that, but, um, we also discovered that I did have, was carrying some extra fat around my, my organs as well. I know mm -hmm. there's a technical term for that, but, um, fat. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, um, you know, that was one thing we wanted to work on. And then, you know, the, the diet, we started seeing some cholesterol numbers going up. We kept an mm -hmm. eye on those and through your re referral to, uh, our, my cardiologist, we, we, we found some things that probably have been going on in my life for a long time because I've inherited some, uh, you know, heart, uh, issues genetically, and there's nothing that I could have done about it, but they didn't really pop up until we started monitoring some of these things through, through blood tests and, and scans and, and yes. things like that. So, um, yeah, that's how we, we, we found yeah. that. And so what changed after you found that information? So a lot of people, you know, might want to know, like you got all this information, you have this genetic heart condition, you have, you know, maybe some plaque in your arteries, your cardiologist is telling you, yes, your cholesterol may be a little bit high. What changed from that point on? What were we able to do? Well, we, you know, after speaking with you, Dr. Patel, we, we knew we had to put a plan together. And part of that plan was, you know, let's, let's, we're going to have to attack this from a, a dietary standpoint, as well as exercise, as well as uh, mindful meditation. Um, you know, so it's, it, we had attack from diff, all different angles. And, and so what we, uh, diet was the number one. Uh, and that was going to be very difficult for me. I, and I knew it. I, I admitted it after we had met. I said to Melissa, I, I don't believe that I can do this. But the more I sat down and thought about it and, and looking into the future, uh, which is us being together, traveling, uh, our kids, ho hopefully grandkids someday, I knew that, you know what, I, had, I can do this. I, I've done diets before, but this, this is for my life. And, and, um, and so you, uh, helped me plan a 100% plant-based diet approach. Uh, again, I've been eating meat like crazy for a long time. I just didn't think I, but it's amazing. I don't have any cravings at all. I don't, I don't say, I wish I could go I have a hamburger cheese. or a cheeseburger. Um, uh, and, and I feel fulfilled after every meal so now i have lost weight uh in a good way and it's all been to the benefit of my my heart health mm -hmm. and um it's lost some weight my all of my number of uh, cholesterol numbers high numbers have come down and uh the more tests and scans we do we're finding out that the potential for blockage was high but it, it's not and over mm -hmm. the last six months, we've seen these drastic changes and improvements in my, in my uh, cholesterol numbers, other, other uh, uh, tests that we drew, and no major blockages in any of the arteries. That's amazing. Congratulations. What, yeah. a, what an amazing feat. And it's not a small feat to change your diet, you know, again, a diet that you've been on all your life. And to make a complete 180, it's difficult. It's challenging. Uh, it takes a, a, a lot of uh, personal willpower. And I always say you have to have something to look forward to in life to make those changes. And I love that you said all the things you want to do 
uh, that motivates you. And that's important for people to hear. What motivates you? What motivates you to want to live your life? And is it more yeah. important than whatever lifestyle choices you've made in the past? And it has to be more important than lifestyle choices for you to make the change. So you obviously are an example uh, to people watching what can happen if you, you know, if you commit to something so important. The other thing I wanted to bring up was Melissa mentioned that you are uh, really committed to your mindful practice, your meditation practice. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, how did you start and how's that been and what do you do? I guess one of the, one of my old habits of just doing, trying to stay in the same kind of ritual every day helps me. I, and I, I guess the key word there is ritual. And that's what I started to make out of it. And uh, one of the first times you and I met and Melissa had mentioned the green folder which is just chock full of so many good things whether it's yours is uh, all torn up yeah I, I, it's still, <laughs> I still, still have tidy. it yeah. and um, one of the areas that you and I covered was um, a way to work on you know mindful mental wellness and what and some of the practices that you can do in order to get into this and I just felt like at the time I was scattered uh, and I need and, and I just felt like so I made it a point every morning to get up and before I did anything the the first thing I did was I would find a a meditation that I liked and it would be guided, which I uh, I need someone to guide me on uh, on how to do this. And those are all available. And I would start at five. I would start at five minutes, and then see how that went. And then I would also incorporate some some sim really very simple stretching uh, yoga type movements along either before or after my meditation. And those types of things would just really set me on a good path for the day. Because sometimes if you just get up and you start going right into your day, you, you haven't given yourself some time to just be in your own moment and to get your, get your mind together and ready for that, for that day. And so, um, and now I've expanded that I'll even, uh, sometimes during the day, I'll take a break, whether it's for two minutes or 10 minutes and, and do a, a time to just slow things down, decompress, and just put myself in the moment. And then at night, I'll do the same thing. Uh, not every night, but I usually put myself in, uh, before I go to bed. Again, gather my thoughts for the day, look back and think, hey, it was a pretty good day. And, uh, you know, just be grateful and thankful for, for that and, and wind down my day with maybe a uh, some thoughts and prayers before uh, going to sleep. So it's it's really it, it doesn't take much time, but the benefits are are huge. It just puts your mind in a very very good spot, and I think Melissa probably appreciates that sometimes as well. <laughs> I think I can help her though. I think I can get her. Yeah, I think I think you can. Well, you know the two things that I love that you said. First is you said that, you know, it's an incremental change. You know, you start out with maybe two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. So people get defeated if they can't sit still for 30. And what you yeah. are um, saying is, look, start where you are and keep working up to, uh, you know, to a practice that is more uh, robust. Don't worry if it's not robust day one. The second thing I love what you said was, yes, you have a formal practice in the morning and you have a formal practice in the evening. But you also use your time during the day when you find yourself maybe walking or rushing to bring yourself back to that mindful practice. So it's not just the formal practices of sitting in silence. It's also that moment to moment awareness that you're stressed. And then you have those tools such as breath work or being in nature or taking a pause. So you've made such such great points. Uh, so where are you going next with your health journey, Larry? What's your next incremental change you need to make? Well, uh, I will continue uh, with my diet. Um, I uh, uh, did come across, I did have a flare up with my ulcerative colitis recently. And so we're managing that right now. Um, but well, I'll always be managing that. And, but I feel like that it's been, it's gone very well this time around because 
you know, I've had you on, on my side helping me through this because there is so much more than just taking a, a pill to try to get through the, this flare up with the ulcerative colitis. And you got you to gotta get your mind right. And then there are other things that can help. So foods that are a little more mild and easier to digest can, can help with the healing process as well. And, um, and then maybe some supplementation, which may also help with the, the gut health. Those are all great things that, you know, even if I knew those were options, I wouldn't know where to go or where to start because there's so many, there's just so many things out there. There's just too much out there. And for you to have you, Dr. Patel, to help me with targeting what we need to, to improve, to help me through this situation is very important. And then continuing to manage uh, my heart health. So mm -hmm. being that I was you know, a weightlifter and I, I, I loved bodybuilding and powerlifting, but you know, my, really my, my goal right now is my heart health. And it's the most important muscle in my body right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm keeping that healthy and, um, we actually have, uh, I've bought some, some more, um, weights for mm -hmm. some more uh, resistance training, which <laughs> will benefit yeah. her as well. And so, um, still focusing on the cardio health, but going to work on the, the, getting the muscle, muscle, uh, built back up for not only my, my heart, my muscles, but. Uh, for the bone health as well. And mm -hmm. I think we can help Melissa that way as well. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You make good points. It's life is um, health is not a linear journey. You can have ups and downs. And the truth is you're, like you said, your ulcerative colitis is something that, you know, may have flares, but you know how to come back through um, maybe faster and more smoother than in the past. And it's also a mental game. When you have a chronic disease, it can emotionally take you down. So just yeah, having the sure. mental resilience can help you come through a chronic illness as well. So such good points that you're making. So tell me, tell the audience, if you were going to tell someone who is also suffering from something currently that is, you know, causing them mental and physical devastation, what would you tell them? First of all, you don't have to fight it on your own. You have options out there and you're not going to find it on the internet i am so glad that i had had you as part of my support and team as well as my wife you got to look to your spouse as well uh the, the plant-based diet that i am on uh she has made it all possible i try to help where i can but she is an, an incredible chef mm -hmm. and so i i say you got to look to the people around you for, for help and support and, and always and in your doctor as well. And, and I would highly recommend any, any and everyone to give your office a call and set up an appointment uh, because you got to get these things checked out. You can do so much research with all the things that are available through testing, blood draws, body analysis, um, and, and getting on the road to, mindful awareness and and meditation because you gotta you gotta hit it from all angles and and definitely look into doing that well said larry well said so thank you so much for joining me today this was a pleasure talking to both of you um and uh you know please let the audience know if there's anything else you want to share you know i think there would be one thing if i may and and you know we're flattered that you would spend this time with us. Um, we didn't talk about supplements at all. Mm. And I'd like to, in a brief moment, just mention that I, I believe the regimen that you've helped both of us, and we're on completely different supplement regimens, has really been instrumental. So specifically for me, you are really focused on my bone health and my eye health, and we don't go anywhere without our little vitamin boxes and being able to get it uh, through full script and online and, um, you know, uh, monitor it has really been helpful. That's to your point, Larry, which is a good one. It can be overwhelming. Where do you begin? 
I don't have to worry about it. And I, I also believe that supplements can, when you have conditions like we do, be one extra tool in our toolkit. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. It's so important to bring that comprehensive picture to health and it could be your medical interventions and your traditional doctors and your prescriptions. It could be your diagnostics that are a little bit more advanced than what people are accustomed to getting. Parallel that with lifestyle practices, such as nutrition and movement and mindfulness and community and support and supplementation. You guys said it beautifully. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Have a good yeah, afternoon. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.